So the Avian Smart Speed Control for RC airplanes or helicopters, we're going to check out all the programming parameters one by one. If you want to win a jet like this, all you have to do is subscribe, click the like button, and leave a comment, and then uh, ring the bell so you don't miss my next video. At 1,000 subscribers, we gave this jet away. At 5,000, we're going to give another one. I don't know what it is yet. We'll see when that time comes. So hey, subscribe guys. Happy flying. All right, guys, in this, uh, in this video, we're just going to go right down the list of the parameters one by one. This is going to be a simple one, but it all starts somewhere. So we got the DX9 out that I'll show you guys on the screen, and we've got our Avian Smart Speed Control, of course, and some of these programming of parameters will apply to all speed controls. They just program in a different way. We're going to be using this program box and we have a smart battery we've got our avian uh, programming parameter cheat sheet and of course the manual so we'll just see what the difference is between helicopter and the airplane mode so that's where we'll start so we got the DX9 it's already bound up to our test plane with an AR630 and we have our 60 amp avian smart speed control with a brushless outrunner motor for our demonstration purposes. So we will start with the transmitter on. Currently the speed control is in the airplane mode. We'll just see what that looks like on the motor and then we'll change it. And we will plug up our battery and energize our plane. Alright, so we're bound to a 3S battery. We know it's 3S's because we heard the, the count of the cells of the battery, the beep, beep, beep. Throttle cut is off. And we got some we got some immediate throttle. So I give it just a little bit of gas and and the motor starts starts turning. So so I got the program box connected to the speed control. We're still bound up. You know, we can still give it some throttle right now. And we'll take a look at the settings real quick. So you plug it up and then you hit select. And we're now connected to the speed control. And you can see that the first parameter is flight mode. And it's currently set in the fixed wing. So we'll hit uh, edit. There you go. Helicopter and then save. Data is saved. All right, the data is saved. We need to unplug our speed control and start over. So the program change we know has taken effect. Transmitter's back on. Gonna unplug the programmer box. We're now in the helicopter mode. Plugging up our plane. It sounded like it bound up like normal. We heard the three counts for the 3S battery. So let's see what happens when you give us some throttle. Ooh, the motor's jerking. So it slowly starts going, and that's what the directions say, is that it will not, the motor will not start spinning until you reach 
forty percent and then it will slowly start up so let's see here we're probably twenty and thirty we're getting around forty that's half stick and it's starting to go so helicopter mode it says it won't start turning until 40% and then it will slowly speed up which makes sense for a helicopter let's see our 40% uh, throttle here on the transmitter so moving up moving up yeah it's around 40 and there it goes started spinning I don't want to go too fast to start vibrating here on the instructions it says in the first parameter programming helicopter governor in this mode the motor starts up when the throttle reaches 40 percent etc etc and the tip it says Fixed wing mode, or choose fixed wing mode if your helicopter is using a external governor. So, if you had a helicopter, you could use fixed wing. And it also says, you know, to, to do throttle curves. So, you could do it either way, just depending on your, uh, your skill. That's above my head. But I'm sure there's people out there that are, that are, uh, that are brighter than me when it comes to the throttle curves and stuff and i'm sure there's a reason to have your plane to be set up in the helicopter mode for one way or another anything's possible you know it's it's fiddling so now we'll get the programmer box out and we'll change it back to fixed wing so i just got an extension here And then hit select. And there we are. We're in helicopter. And we want to change it to back to fixed wing. And then save. All right. We'll rebind it one last time so we know we're leaving it in the fixed wing. All righty then. We're back in fixed wing. We're going to unplug the airplane. We'll unplug the programmer box. We'll leave the transmitter on. And then we'll bind our plane back up. And when we give it throttle, the motor should immediately turn. So we know we're back in the fixed wing mode. So we're back in our fixed wing mode. And I just wanted to show you guys that we get the telemetry here. Smart ESC, battery information, there's our battery, and then at the very end, this is the Avian Prog, the Avian Smart Speed Control Programmer, where you can make the changes just like we did with the program box, you can do it directly with your transmitter as well. And here is a Sean tip. The Sean tip is, is that with a smart speed control, you can see the telemetry on your generation two and newer transmitter, and you can use a servo extension for the speed control, just in case you need to. You know, the smart speed control servo lead, the signal wire is gray, and that represents that you know, this speed control is set up to receive data both ways. You know, you can send a signal to the speed control to, to have, make it spin the motor, and it'll, it'll also send information backwards. And that will work through a extension. Okay, guys, hey, that's parameter number one. Some of you guys might have thought that was goofy, but we're going to start at the beginning and work our way through. So it'll give somebody some entertainment or 
something I said or pointed at or just got a visual is going to help somebody somewhere. You know, I learned just about everything that I know thanks to YouTube. I used to watch hundreds of videos just trying to catch a glimpse of how somebody had something plugged in. You know, what color wire was that over there? So that's just how it all works. Hey, thank you guys so much for all the thumbs up and the comments. Keep them coming. That really, really helps the, the algorithm, they call it. The more, the more people show that they like what I do, then YouTube will advertise me to more people. You know, uh, if they see 20 people watched it and only one person gave a thumbs up, then the algorithm is going to think, eh, they didn't like this stuff. You know, or if it's... 11 thumbs up and 20 people watched it and you know then the algorithm might say hey you know people like this let's uh get this guy to pop up in front of other people there's quite a bit of content that goes into gets uploaded to youtube just in case you're uh, curious a fun fact 300 minutes of content gets uploaded every second <laughs> chew on that for a minute that that's like gives you a headache just trying to think about that so just for me to get 10 minutes here and there and, and have some awesome people like you to follow along, that's that's really, really makes my day. Thinking about 300 minutes every second. So keep the thumbs up coming. Keep the comments coming. Do this guy right here. Ring the notification bell. Make sure you're subscribed. We lost like 100 and something subscribers in the past month. So check and see if you're subscribed. And then if I don't respond to your comments, guys, it's sometimes I just can't. But... I go through them a couple times a week, and sometimes if uh, you know a few jump out at me, I'll, I'll make sure I answer you, you know, right then and there. If not, I try to get caught up every every week or so. But if you see somebody else's comment that has a question and you know the answer to it, go ahead and, and help the guy out. It'd be cool if uh, if we started to have our own little chat room. You know, there was a comment a few months ago or whatever that somebody left, and then somebody else answered it and then someone else commented on that and, and it, it went, went along like eight times during three different people and I just thought that was really cool so you know hey keep that going you know just keep it clean and keep it keep it helpful so that's all I got for this one guys we'll go on with the uh, parameter number two in the next video through our avian uh, series but happy weekend I hope some of you guys get to go fly it's cold as uh, as Alaska here so no flying for me maybe someday all right, guys, hey, thank you. And until next time, you'll see me here. Right there.